Welcome to this presentation talking you through the GCSE options for Year 9 2021. So just to give you an idea of the timeline that we're working towards for the options process, there are three weeks where a lot of stuff's going to be coming very thick and fast for your child. So this week, um, your child has had the opportunity to have some careers meetings with a company called Inspire to Achieve to talk through their options and also their choices further afield, like their post-16 and potential careers they would like to have. We will be sending out an information booklet shortly that will be available on the website for you to um, have a look at, read about the subjects, read about the courses. And I've been going into form groups to give a presentation very similar to the one that you're watching now. Now next week you'll get some letters informing you about student pathways and I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute. There will be parents and options evening for you to attend so you can go and speak to teachers about the different courses on offer as well as how your child is getting on and we'll be populating the website with more and more information and videos about the different courses on offer. Then on the week beginning of the 10th of May, we will publish the options form and students will be asked to fill that out within a certain time frame. So before I talk to you in a little bit more detail about the GCSE courses, just wanted to kind of go through a few do's and don'ts. And I've talked to the students about these as well. So the, my main advice to all students is to think about courses that they're good at, they're interested in and they enjoy. And that's really important because students who often do well in subjects do it because they have a passion for it and an interest in it and they have a natural aptitude for it. So that is a key question that every student should be thinking about. The other thing we encourage students to do and the way that we set up our option blocks is to encourage students to do a broad range of subjects and that will really help them to prepare for their post-16 options and what they would like to do where they can really specialise then in a particular field. We'll be putting lots of information up on the website, there'll be an information booklet as I've said before and we really really advise your child to read that really carefully and think about the information and think about the courses. Subject teachers, heads of the department, myself and other members of staff will be around the school and I advise your child if they've got any questions, any concerns or anything they're not sure about in terms of the process or the courses to go and ask for advice. And finally, I want students to think really, really carefully about these choices. These are choices that are going to impact on what they study for the next two years. And so it needs to be done carefully and calmly and not rushed. Now, it's also important to talk about a few don'ts and things that students should avoid doing during this process. So I have told the students very clearly that they need to think about the choices that are right for them. They shouldn't be making a choice because a friend is doing that. We can't guarantee that those students will be in the same classes together. And students, as they move through the school, often move between friendship groups or drift apart in terms of a friendship. And so just because they're really close friends with somebody now doesn't mean to say that by the time they leave that will be the case. So students should really think about what's in their best interest rather than choosing the subject because their friend has. Also, often some students will pick a subject because they have a really good relationship or really, really like a teacher. We can't guarantee that they will get that same teacher next year. And so we encourage students to make sure they pick the subject because they like the subject, not because of the teacher. They also really need to think carefully about what they want to do when they leave school in terms of their post-16 choices and also about any potential career choices they, that they might be interested in pursuing. And so they should continue to study subjects which may be asked as part of an application for those courses. So they should not drop anything that might disadvantage them in that way. Now, just to talk you through what the GCSE courses will look like um, moving forward, um, students will have to study the core curriculum, their foundation curriculum subjects, and then they'll have a number of option subjects that they can choose. So in years 10 and 11, students do English, language and literature, and they get two GCSE grades for that, those subjects. They will study maths and they get one GCSE grade for that. And they also will study science. Most students in the year group will do um, get two um, science GCC grades, but they will study physics, chemistry and biology as part of that course. And they get a grade for their performance across all three disciplines. Students may instead choose to do the triple award 
And that triple award means that they continue to study biology, chemistry and physics. They get an opportunity to study their subjects in more depth. And they also end up with three GCSEs, one for each subject. As part of our foundation curriculum, students will do PE core, they'll do personal development, a computing course and also religious studies. And then after that, they'll choose to do 20 hours um, of four different options, um, studying each for five hours a fortnight. Now, students' choices will be dependent upon their pathway. We've worked with um, the members of staff at this school, heads of the department and the year coordinator to choose a pathway which we feel is most appropriate for your child. Each pathway contains a broad range of subjects and opportunities to do different subjects and, and explore the things that your child is good at, enjoys and would like to pursue for the next two years. So our first pathway is the EBAC pathway or the B pathway. We do offer a second pathway which is very similar which is called the main pathway and our third pathway is the alternative curriculum pathway. So the EBAC pathway um, is a set of qualifications including the core curriculum so that's English, Maths and Science and students who also study History or Geography which is the Humanities and a Modern Foreign Language that forms part of their pathway. On top of that, students will also get choices of other subjects that they can use to supplement those qualifications. And students have been chosen for the um, EBAC pathway because they have been achieving good grades in year seven, eight and nine. They have the ability to go on to university or on a, a qualification that's equivalent to a university degree. And we want to give students a broad and balanced range of subjects to help them with those applications. The EBAC pathway doesn't mean to say that it is just strictly academic subjects and there will be opportunities for your child to do maybe a practical or a more technical award as um, part of their other options. So this is what the GCC pathways look like for the EBAC. In option block one, they will choose a modern foreign language. Um, in the second block, they have a choice of creative, practical and technical awards. In option block three, they will choose a humanity subject. And in option block four, they have an open choice of a range of different subjects that they'd like to pursue. Now, the main pathway is very, very similar to the um, EBAC pathway, um, but we choose this for students who may feel less confident doing the modern foreign language and would probably feel more confident doing something like geography, history or computing. So as you can see option block one they will have a choice between history, geography and computing. Option block two will be the creative, practical and technical um, qualifications that they can look into. Option block three is a very similar option block in that sense and then option block four is an open range of choices. Finally, the alternative curriculum pathway um, is a pathway that is developed for a very small number of students. And this is an invitation based pathway from our SENCO, Mrs. Thompson. And if you um, have um, been chosen to do that pathway, you will be contacted with Mrs. Thompson to discuss what this is like and why you've been chosen to do this. So. Just a couple of key bits of information before the end of this presentation in terms of things that students can't do that's really, really important. So when the options form is published, students will get a choice to put two preferences in for each option block. And the reason why we do that is sometimes for a variety of reasons, we're unable to fulfill the first preference. However, where we can, we make sure that students get their first preference. So students need to think really, really carefully about what they want to do in each option block. And if they can't do that, what would they seriously want to do instead? So in each option block, they cannot choose the same subject twice as their first preference. So, for example, computing is in a number of the option blocks. So if they really want to do computing, then they need to decide the option block where they want to do computing in and make that in their first preference. The option form that's filled out cannot have computing as the first preference each time. There are also a number of subjects that are assessed in a very, very similar way. So art and design and photography, art textiles um, are all subjects that have the same type of assessment done and it's the, actually the same qualification. So students should not study combinations of these and opt to study just one of them.
And finally, whilst it is possible to study a technology subject, in order to make sure students have a broad range of choices and have opportunities to be assessed in lots of different ways, we advise they make one choice of a technology subject. So that's either design technology, for instance, or food preparation. And to think really, really carefully about uh, combining two technology subjects in their choices. So good luck with the um, options process. I hope that gives you a bit more information about how the GCSE courses will look, the option blocks for your child and what they need to do moving forward.